Hey guys, another video from Rage. Um, I had a guy on Facebook <laughs> buy and sell things. Mick mentioned that he had an issue with some motor wires that were really, really short. I don't have a motor with cutoff wires, and I'm not going to cut up a motor just to show you. So I'm going to use this old burned up ESC as an example. Um, you cut your wires, strip them back, leave yourself about a quarter inch. Take them out and make them kind of fluffy. Basically just take them and brush the edges out. And you're going to push the two together like this. Do that to both sides. And you're going to end up with kind of like a ball sort of looking thing. And you take these and you roll them together like, well, like you're rolling a cigarette or another adult substance. But anyways, you roll them just like this. You get them all nice and tight like this. And I'm telling you, once you have them rolled together, they're already going to hold. You could basically shrink tube it and you're good to go. But <clears throat> a lot of people like to solder. This is one of those Milwaukee 12-volt cordless solder guns. If you do not have one of these, I highly suggest it for RC work. They're not extremely hot like a lot of the electric ones are. So they don't melt your connectors when you're doing stuff with them. But they get hot enough to melt the correct temp solder, which I'm just using regular regular rosin, sor ro rosin core solder. Sorry, it's always a tongue twister. <clears throat> Anyways, this gun is already hot. I turned it on, it hasn't been on, that's all it takes, about 30 seconds. Take yourself a rag or something like that, wipe off your tip. And then basically what I do is I either have another person hold me, hold my component that I'm soldering or I set it up something in the vise or whatever to hold it so it's at basically a flat level angle. You take your solder, you work it down into the joint that you're putting together and you just give yourself a decent bowl of solder up here right on top. Now for sake of time I'm not going to take the time to sit here and go all the way around this wire. I'm just going to do the, the top of it and show you kind of sort of what I'm talking about here. What I mean by the same diameter as the wire is you want to get this to flow down all the way around. And basically as you're getting it hot and you're rolling it back and forth, all that solder is working its way down into all those little hairs that you pulled apart. So you're making a nice solid joint so your electricity can flow through there and not create a whole bunch of issues or over amp low draw or anything like that. You want to try to get it nice and flat and even and as close to the diameter of the wire itself, not the casing, that you possibly can because anytime you make a joint that's larger, it's going to pull amperage away from your, your <clears throat> um, component. For instance, if you've got a big huge glob on here, it's going to slow the current down. And I know a lot of people think I'm crazy for that, but I've done some testing on amp draws when I've done this on circuit boards for automobiles, and it makes a big difference when you're talking about CAN communication, bus lines, and things like that. So basically, you're going to work that all the way around. I, I didn't make it fully pretty. I didn't sit here and do both sides of it. You take your component, you flip it over, you do the other side. However you have to hold your component, make sure it stays fixed so this isn't moving all over the place. You want it to stay as stable as possible. These also, when you shut them down, they will stay red until they're completely cool to the touch so you can work with the tip or put it back in the box. I highly recommend these. These things are awesome. I've had five or six cheapos and electric guns and they're all garbage. This has been the best investment I've made so far for this whole RC stuff. So the other thing I did was I took a piece of shrink tube that's just slightly bigger than the wire itself and I cut it so it'll pretty much fit in between the two joints that I soldered. You want it to be about the same length. This isn't exactly perfect, but like I said, this is just to explain what I'm doing. And the reason why I put a small section right here is because it'll shrink down and it'll protect any sort of chafing or anything on the inside of your cases or anything like that. What I use to shrink this stuff down with, this is some automotive shrink tubing. I just grabbed some um, tubing from work different various sizes. This all has glue on the inside. You do want the glue, especially if you're going to do a waterproof, you know, rig or a boat or anything like that. Or if you ever accidentally drive into a puddle, which I do it on purpose. So, I mean, I want my stuff to be as sealed as possible. So you take your shrink tube and you meld it down just like so. Now see how it's pulling itself into that joint that I made. So it's pretty much the same diameter as the wire already. This should make it so you don't have a whole lot of problems going through your cases. The more you flow it out, and make it the same diameter as the wire or as close to possible <clears throat> it's going to go right inside of the the joint coming out of the motor you know when you bring them all together so basically after you do that i like to take another section of tubing like this that's usually longer i'm just going to use this small piece because i don't want to be wasteful here 
and then you take that and you go over it. You want to go over your joint the same distance as the joint on both sides. So if you got a quarter inch joint, you want three quarters of, of tubing, three quarters of an inch of tubing or an inch, whatever you feel more comfortable using. The further out you get when the glue seals, it's going to give you a nice permanent fix. So this repair is actually going to be permanent. It's not going to be something you got to tear apart. It's not going to be something that's going to get hot and melt and come apart as long as you make sure that solder is flowed all the way around. After you're done with that, you're going to take all three wires that you've put your extensions on, because obviously you're doing this because of a, a short wire, something got caught in a gear, or maybe you have cut them back so many times to reuse the motor that you want to get more life out of it. You can do this as long as you make sure that everything is as tight and neat as possible. So then after that, I take a section of larger tubing like this, the shrink tubing, and I usually give myself enough room to where it's going to cover my repair again by a quarter of an inch. So if I have three quarters of an inch of tube, I want an inch and a quarter of big tube to go over top of both of the small tubes that are on each individual wire. So you're going to do your small tube, your next size up, then you're going to take all of them and go together. Now let's pretend this was three wires coming out of here. You're going to want to take them and bunch them up and do a ball sort of. And if you're afraid that you're not going to have room and you have the length of wire to do it, step these. Put one here, cut this one a little shorter, put your solder here, cut this one a little shorter, put your solder here. That way when you put your large shrink tube over, they won't be touching each other. You won't ever have to worry about a short. Anyways, basically you get them all set up like that. Put your shrink tube over top. Take your shrink tube and get it hot. Melt all three of them together as tight as you possibly can. You want them to be nice and close. That way when you start putting them through the... The cases of your motor or whatever it is that you're trying to get through you don't have a huge glob of wire and it's not all nasty looking now this isn't going to shrink down on the one wire by itself because it's meant it's about the right size for all three of these but for time's sake like i said i'm just going to use this as an example once you get it all tightened down that's pretty much what your repair is going to look like other than you're going to have three wires coming out of the top so I hope that this answers anybody's question on repairing a motor or an ESC or something that you've cut down short. I mean, just like this CSC here, I took the top right off of it, pulled the fan right out of the way, took the plugs and everything right off of it so I could gain a little bit more length, spread the wires out, get all my solders evenly. Um, if anybody has any questions or if I missed anything or if there's something that you would like to know about soldering or if there's a special wire you should use, yes, there is. There's some different temperatures. You don't want to use extremely low temp because these do draw a lot of amps. They can create heat, your solder can get hot and come undone. You want about a mid-temp, mid-temp, mid-range, mid-heat range solder. Um, like I said, if anybody's got any questions or, or anything, if they'd like to comment on the video, go ahead. Um, I'm more than willing to add to this or change it or do anything anybody needs. Um, <clears throat> here again, this is just an example. If you're doing it on a motor and you've got a metal case, you want to try to step those out. Make sure that the joints aren't right next to each other. Try to make one a little longer than the other. If you have no room and you know that you're basically done with your wire, do what you can. Get them as close as you can and make those solder joints as small as you possibly can. Anyways, um, don't forget to subscribe, smash the bell. You guys have a good night. Thanks for watching.